The world is all just a bunch of data, and to visualize that, we need dashboards. So let's see how we can build a dashboard for Barbenheimer in a React app with Tremor. So we're gonna start off with the vanilla Vite React app. We're inside of the code, I haven't touched anything yet, so we're just starting from scratch. Heading over to Tremor, Tremor is a React library that's gonna allow us to really easily build these dashboards by putting them together kind of like Lego blocks. If we look at some of the examples here where we have our different components, we can look at the area chart and we can see that we can really just plug this in by copying some of the components and we can really just start to plug in our data. But starting with the basics, we need to actually get this installed first. Now, one thing we need to do before moving forward is we need Tailwind installed as Tremor uses Tailwind to build all of its different components and then it allows us to also extend it. Over on the Tailwind documentation, I wanna use the Byte specific installation. So I'm gonna go ahead and search for that and find that installation guide where I'm going to go ahead and first run this command for installing all my dependencies and paste it into my terminal. Then I'm going to also run this init command for Tailwind, paste that in as well. Where next we need to also update our template path. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this content property from the Tailwind config. And inside of our code, we're going to now have this Tailwind config that was added via that init command. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. And as a last step, we just need to add the Tailwind directive. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that as well. And under source index.css or really wherever you want to add this, I'm going to paste in those directives. And now we should be ready to go. So we can take this example as an H1 tag. And I'm going to simply replace everything inside of the app file with just this H1 tag. And we can see that we're now ready to go with Tailwind. So next, let's actually install Tremor. So this should be a little bit easier where all we're going to need to do is copy the CLI tool command. So I'm going to paste that in my terminal and it's going to go through and it's actually going to configure everything for us. Let's select the framework we're going to use, which is Vite. We're going to say, yes, we want to run the command to install the dependencies and such. So hit yes. And we can see just like that, we're already configured. And if we look inside of our Tailwind config file, we're going to see all the configurations that Tremor adds in order to make it work properly. So let's start off with the basics where we're going to have our Barbie versus the Oppenheimer column. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this H1. Let's give this a nice wrapper div. And then each of our items are going to have their own individual divs where we're going to have Barbie. And we're going to also have our Oppenheimer. And each of these are going to be shown in a grid. So what I'm going to do is set up a class name of grid, grid calls two, where it's going to give me two columns, as well as a gap of, let's just say 12. And we can also start to set up our different titles in an H2 so we can add some relevant header styles to that. So we have our H2. And let's also add some styles to both of those H2s. I'm going to add a class name of, let's say, text to Excel, how about font bold? And we can see that while simple, we have our two columns ready to go. Now, in order to dynamically pull in some of this data and the details, I created these two JSON files that you can find inside of the source code in the description of this video. But really, if we look at Barbie, for instance, we have some revenue numbers. We also have a poster path. We have a few things that's gonna allow us to play around with the data inside of this dashboard. So let's start off with something simple where how about I just wanna grab the revenue and I wanna throw that on the page. If we start to look through all the components, we can see that a lot of these are dealing with different data types. And while we're gonna get to that, we wanna start off with just some simple text. So I'm going to use this card component where we can see it's just going to display some information for us. But what we're going to do is we're going to first import this card component. I'm going to paste it in at the top of my file. And we can see that they even give us some nice usage examples where here we have this card where it has this nice little stylization. It has the little subtitle. So I'm going to do just that. Looks like we also need to pull in two additional components. So I'm going to first make those available. But then I'm going to go ahead and copy this card as is. And let's go ahead and paste this below each of our headers where we're going to have a card for each of our different movies. Now, of course, we want these also to be revenue. And before we actually pull in the dynamic data, let's just see if this works. We can see with just that little bit, we already have a nice working example where we have both of our columns and we have those stats for each. So let's actually make this use real data. So I'm going to start to import that where I have my Barbie data. And that's from movie Barbie dot Jason. And I also have my Oppenheimer data, where that's from a similar location. Now that global revenue value is gonna be under that global underscore revenue value. So inside of my metric, I'm gonna go ahead and update this to a dynamic value where I have my Barbie data dot global revenue. I'm gonna do the same thing for Oppenheimer, where it's gonna be Oppenheimer data. Got to fix that E. And we can see the numbers immediately work and we have our realistic data. Now, just as a quick side note, if you're wondering where I got this data from, I'm using a mix of box office mojo, which is going to give me a lot of the numbers, especially the domestic dailies, as well as the movie database, particularly the movie database API, 
where I can get a lot of this programmatically. Now, just as a quick fix before we continue moving on, I actually don't want this text line to be centered. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove that centered and I can probably get rid of most of that other CSS inside of app.css as it's not being used. And I think I'm pretty content, but we can see that we can use a little bit of margin, which is why it's nice that not only does Tremor use Tailwind, we also have direct access to that. So we can use it just like we would any other application and get our styles easily applied. Now, another thing with this is it's a little bit hard to read. Typically, at least in the US or other countries that use the same pattern, we wanna see the commas between each of those three digits just to make it a little bit easier to parse. Now, while I'm sure it might be fun or challenging to write your own, I'm a little bit lazy and I'd rather just have a robot do it. So I asked ChatGPT to create me an add commas to number function. So I'm gonna paste that in at the top of my project and then I'm gonna head over, oops, I need to type that to a number first, but I'm gonna head down to where I'm actually using that data to simply wrap it with that function, including both numbers. And we can see we easily now have those commas representing each of those values. So let's add another data point. How about not only do we wanna know the revenue, we wanna know the budget. We wanna know how much they actually invested to see how much money they're actually making, right? So for each of these, I'm gonna go ahead and just clone down that card. I'm gonna change this to budget for each of them. And inside of the data, the property is simply budget. So back inside of app.tsx, I'm going to go ahead and update that property. I'm gonna also add some margin bottom to make sure we space this out a little bit for each of these cards. And we can now see that while Barbie's budget was 145 million, the revenue is currently at 811 million. Oppenheimer is not doing too bad itself. Now, as good as these numbers look, let's start to stylize it a little bit. How about we add the poster to the left of each of these cards just to make sure that it looks a little bit more representative of each of those movies. Now, I have that image available at poster path. So back inside of app.tsx for each of these, I'm gonna go ahead and add an image where for instance, I'm gonna do Oppenheimer data dot poster path. We can set the alt as poster. We can close that up. I'm gonna do the same for Barbie and make sure I update that to Barbie data. But now these images are huge, so let's break this down a little bit. I'm gonna set it up so each of these are gonna be its own grid. So I'm gonna first wrap all those different data points. I'm gonna also wrap the cards themselves so that they're on their own as a specific part. And we can see that it's looking pretty good, so let's replicate that inside of Oppenheimer. Now, honestly, the easiest way to do this is I'm gonna simply clone that div and I'm gonna get rid of the original div where I'm just gonna make sure I update this back to Oppenheimer. And I'm gonna update all the Barbie data instances to Oppenheimer data. And I think this is looking pretty good. So we have the dollars in here, but we don't have what the fans think. Maybe it's making more money, but maybe the fans like one over the other. Inside of our data point, we have this vote average. So we can use this as a way to display how our movies are actually resonating with the fans. Now we could probably just display that as a number, but that's a little bit boring. So what I'm gonna actually do is use a donut chart where this is probably a little bit of a different use case than you would typically expect. But what we can do is we can add that number as one of the data points and we can add the remainder from 100 or 10, depending on what number you're using as the rest of it. So it's gonna give us the effect of having a nice little graphical way to show the fan response. So let's look at a usage example where we have our imports here and we can see how the data is gonna be set up. So we're really gonna have two of these examples of how our data is gonna look, where then once we have our donut chart, we can drop it in where we can add a title if we want and we can add that chart itself. So inside of my data column, I'm gonna start off by creating a new div just to wrap this. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this example of both the title and that donut chart, paste that in right inside of that div wrapper. I'm gonna also import these components at the top, including title, and my donut chart. Now we have two missing points here where we have the data itself, but we also have this the value formatter where what that's gonna do is when it actually drops it in the to the chart, which we'll see in an example later, it's going to format it specifically for the viewing purposes, not for the data consumption purposes. But we don't actually need this for the donut chart, so we're gonna get rid of this for now. But we do need our data. So I'm gonna set up an array where we can see that the way that this data is formatted, where we have a name and then we have a label along with the value. So I'm gonna paste that in. We can see that this label is going to be sales and I can update this category to what it is, such as user score. But then we wanna actually update these values where we're gonna have our Barbie data and that's gonna be called our vote average. And then we're gonna have a similar one for our second data point, but it's gonna be 10 
minus that vote average to give us the remainder. Now, if we look at the chart, we can see we have this nice visualization where we need to fix a few things, but we can see it already working properly. First, let's get these numbers and the labels right, where we don't necessarily need labels since we're really only showing one value. Starting with the colors, how about we show a green and that slate? Where first of all, let's reverse this because of the order that we're passing in our data. So we're gonna have green and slate. And then again, we don't actually need these labels because the way that we're showing our data doesn't really make sense since we're showing a singular value. So let's just set this as false. And now this is looking pretty good, but how about the number on the inside? I wanna make that show the actual value, not the total, which is what it's currently showing. So I'm gonna take this vote average value and we're gonna add a label prop We're inside. So let's set this to a dynamic value of our vote average, but I'm gonna also multiply this by 10 to turn it into a percentage. So I'm gonna also add that percentage symbol where now we can see that we have a big float to this and we don't necessarily need that. So I'm gonna wrap this in parentheses I'm gonna also apply to fixed. And we can now see that we have a nice number that represents how well our fans are liking this particular movie. If we want, we can even stylize this more, such as I probably need some margin bottom on this to separate it away from the other cards. How about I want the text to be a little bit bigger. I want the font to be bold so it's nice and visible. And then I also wanna set it up so that it's not super big as it is now. So how about a width of 24 and a height of 24. And we can see that that's looking a lot better sitting inside of here. And if we also update this label to user rating, I think we can call that complete. So let's replicate this over to Oppenheimer. So I'm gonna go ahead and just simply copy this div that's wrapping our card. And I'm gonna go ahead and paste it on top of our Oppenheimer cards. But then as usual, I wanna make sure I update this to the Oppenheimer data where we have a twist where even though it's not making as much money, it looks like people are liking this movie more than Barbie. Now, I think this is a pretty good overview, but let's add one more thing. Let's have them competing against each other in one chart. So for this last one, we're gonna use a line chart where we can see an example down here where we have two different streams of data or how about one is Barbie and one is Oppenheimer. Now, just as a quick note and caveat, the only data that I have is domestic data and that domestic is for the US. So it's only gonna be the data numbers, the revenue numbers for the US for this first week or so. So starting with this usage example, I'm gonna make sure that I have my card, my title and my line chart where all I really need to do is add my line chart. I'm going to copy in this chart data as well as this date former just so that I have an example to work from and specifically that formatter I'll show how that works in a second then I'm going to also copy in that card and for this one I'm going to paste in at the bottom of everything so I actually need to add yet another div to wrap all this so I'm going to make sure that I nest this all inside of my top level div. So at this point, we can see that I have my chart with all of that data inside. I'm also gonna just add some margin top just to make sure that it's spaced out a little bit. But now let's actually update this chart data to relevant data for our movies. So in both of these data files, I have domestic daily and each of these represent a specific date and the revenue for that specific date. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna match up that date and have the revenue numbers for both movies inside of each object that gets passed in. Now there's probably a better way to do this, but I'm gonna start off by creating my chart data constant. And what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna map through rbdata.domestic daily. So what this is going to do is it's going to give me a new instance for each of those pieces of data. Now, as I'm mapping through, I'm going to have that revenue for Barbie and I'm going to also have the date. So what I can do is inside of this map statement, I'm going to ultimately return my dates and I'm going to also return, actually I can just without the colon and I can return my Barbie number as that revenue number. Now, when I said that I can probably do this a better way, I probably wanna have an array that's independent of my Barbie data and Oppenheimer data that has just the dates or something along those lines where I'm not just mapping through this data. But for this purpose, and just to kind of show as an example, we're gonna work with this. But what I can do now is I can look for the Oppenheimer data that has that specific date. So I'm gonna say const Oppenheimer is equal to my Oppenheimer data dot domestic daily, where I'm going to use the find method for op, and I'm gonna find where my op dot date is equal to my date. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna compare the date in the domestic daily for Oppenheimer compared to the specific value of the current instance of the map statement for that date. And it's gonna find that value. And once I have that, I'm gonna now be able to plug in for Oppenheimer, my Oppenheimer dot revenue. Now, of course, this is yelling at me because it might not exist. So I'm going to make sure I add my conditional uh, optional chaining there. But now I can get rid of that original chart 
and I can start to look at how I'm going to actually add this into my data. So if I scroll back down all the way to my card that has the line chart, we can see that first of all, it looks like I capitalized that differently than we originally had it. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. But we can also update the categories where I have Barbie and I have Oppenheimer. I think it's only appropriate that I make Barbie pink. And if we look inside of our dashboard, we can see already we have our data actually being added, but it looks like something funky is going on where if we see inside of this little tooltip, it has percentages where that's not necessarily the data format that we're working with. If we look at this value formatter, this is what we were talking about before, where what this is going to do is allow us to change how the data looks for the presentation purposes. And if we look at the data format that copied in as the example, it looks like what this is doing is it's kind of doing something similar to what we needed. Maybe I could have used that in the beginning, but what I'm just going to do is get rid of that and I'm going to ultimately pass in my add commas to number. And once it's in there, we can see that it's now working properly. Now, if we also look on the side of this, we can see that we also have an issue where we're not seeing the right values here, where we just see a bunch of zeros. On side of the line chart, we have this Y axis width where we can control how much space is inside. So if we set it to 120, for instance, we can see that the issue was just the numbers were too big for that scale. But now with that bigger width, we can see the numbers as it goes through that chart. And finally, importantly, we want to make sure that we update the title to the right thing. So domestic daily, and we can see that our label was updated. But generally, we can see that we had this nice look at a high level look of how Barbie versus Oppenheimer did. Well, this was a pretty simple example of some of the different components. We can look at Tremor, where there's a lot of different opportunities for the different types of data that we can show. And if we look at the blocks, we can see that even more so, it's going to give us a lot of options for pre-configured sets of components that give us a lot of really awesome ways to drop these in into our applications. For instance, if we wanted to track those revenue numbers, we wanted to see the trends, we wanted to see how it's working daily, we can use a card like this. Or if we wanted to start working with the full data set, such as tabular data, and actually dump that on the page for somebody to be able to browse through and see, we have a lot of different table options as well. But whatever your dashboard needs, this really gives a lot of opportunity for these drop-in components to make things look a lot nicer than just a static bunch of text on a screen. But with Tremor, you can finally deliver that rundown whenever you actually figure out what that means. If you're looking to learn more about how you can build full stack applications with React, such as maybe you want to store all this data inside of a database, have user authentication, I'm building a full stack React course that teaches you all these concepts using AppRite. So make sure you head over to spacejelly.dev slash React AppRite, where you can sign up to get updates as well as tips for React. If you want to learn more about how you can liven up those dashboards or really any kind of web application with things like animations, check out my video where I teach you how to do that with Framer Motion. That data is not going anywhere, so make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and click that little notification bell for more web dev tutorials. Thanks for watching.